Funds U.S. adults to start getting colon cancer screenings at the age of 45, five years younger than it previously recommended. Colon cancer rates have been declining overall, but the draft guidelines issued by the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force reflect a growing concern about rising rates in people under the age of 50. Dr. Alex Crean is a colorectal surgeon with Memorial Hospital and back here on The Morning Show. Good morning. Morning, Bruce. Thank you for having me. Of course. So most people who get colon cancer have no signs, no symptoms, and no risk. So is this meant to help establish early intervention? That's right. Um, you know, the best way to treat colon cancer is really to prevent it, so to catch it before it ever becomes a cancer, which would be a precancerous lesion called a polyp, or to catch it at an early stage where the, uh, the treatment is much more effective and long-lasting. So this is the number three killer in the U.S. Is more frequent testing recommended for those with abnormal colon polyps or a family history of colon cancer or even genetic disorders? Absolutely. All, all of those things really merit um, either an earlier examination or more frequent examinations. We know that through genetics and then just some uh, lifestyle factors, they just have a higher risk of uh, having a colon cancer occur, so you want to keep a closer eye on those patients. So I was looking at this, and it's my understanding that this new proposal also emphasizes that the disease occurs more often, is screened for less, and leads to more deaths in black adults in the African-American community. That is true. Um, we're still trying to figure that out, um, but if you're an African-American patient at 45, or even consider potentially five years younger at 40, um, you do want to seek out with your primary care physician, gastroenterologist, surgeon about earlier screening, especially if you're having some type of symptoms. So what's interesting here is that the American Cancer Society has basically been saying this all along. In fact, it's in their guidelines. So I've got to ask, with this added backing from the task force, will that mean that tests for people who are in that 45 to 49 age bracket may now get the tests covered by insurance because it really hadn't been in the past necessarily. That, that's the key thing. You know, the American Cancer Society changed the guidelines a couple of years ago. The task force just had the draft report yesterday. Um, people want to get screened, but obviously, you know, there's a cost to it. And if insurance will cover it as a screening examination, I think that's better for everyone because the overall cost of treating the cancer, you know, it should decrease if we're catching them earlier. And I think the last time that you and I chatted, there was a challenge in getting people screened. And you've got the pandemic that's going on right now. Is that really complicating things and not making it any easier? We, w we do want to encourage people not to uh, skip screening tests. You know, now that we've got a lot of routine testing, we know it's a safe procedure. It does not require hospital admission. You know, you don't want to neglect other things um, for fear about the pandemic. Uh, we can do it safely, and it's, it's your health long term. So you do want to consider, you know, staying on top of your screening examinations. And, and here's the bottom line. If you catch it early, you've got a better chance of having a good long life. But if you let it go, you know, there could be problems. That's right. You know, I, I tell patients, you know, don't, don't look at the stage too closely because you can read some things online that can scare you. But the earlier the stage we do diagnose the cancer at, the treatment is more straightforward, um, frequently can avoid things like chemotherapy or radiation, and then the survival long term goes up dramatically. And how often should you go ahead and have this screening? Uh, at the minimum, every 10 years. But if you're finding polyps, have family history, have symptoms, maybe more frequently, five years, even one to three years, depending on what's going on. All right. And, and guys, they're hesitant to go to the doctor anyway. I'm one of them. So get your significant other to go ahead and tell you, just do it kind of like the Nike slogan. Doc, thanks for being here. Thanks so much, Bruce. We'll be right back.